Hello and welcome to Digital Demos. I'm your host Sal and today we will be going over layer management in Photoshop. Chances are your layers probably look a little bit something like this. Unnamed, uncategorized, and overall just a general mess. Now when you start to get around to making renderings or images that look something more like this one that I have displayed right here, you'll want those layers to be clearly organized as it'll make your time a lot easier when you're starting to go back for editing purposes or if you're trying to just show someone the file. It really helps to be able to know what each layer is doing. So in this video we will be going over a few tips and tricks to really help you organize your files and make sure that you know exactly what is what to the best degree possible without giving you a whole ton of work of just combing through things and constantly naming layers. So let's get started. Now this file right here is an old rendering that I made a while back and as you can see the layers here are all decently organized. There's a ton of layers and if I didn't have these at least organized to some extent, going back through this rendering would be an absolute nightmare. I actually did fix up the rendering a little bit recently and I was pretty thankful that I did have these organized. There are four main ways we can go about organizing our layers in Photoshop. That is naming the layers, grouping the layers, using smart objects, and simply coloring the layers. Now coloring the layers isn't really a major organizational tip, but it's just a, a fun way to start with some flair. We will start off with name the layers. It's pretty simple. Double click on the name of your layer, and you name it. Now as you can see there are multiple things, layers here that I have named, so I know exactly what is doing what. If I hide these and show them, I know that this is a base image that has a blimp in it, this one has no blimp. And as layers get more complicated and stacked up on top of each other, this naming helps me know what any effect textures that I might have do. For instance, this texture right here that's named black and white inverted blur, I know for a fact that it's an inverted black and white image and it's blurred, so I personally know exactly what that image is doing. The same goes for these other blurs. This one right here is just beyond saturated. I oversaturated the image to give it some more color. I sent to that, I even have uh, different textures and what they do. If I open up this cliffs group right here, you can also see that any clipping masks that I created throughout of my work, I made sure to note that they're adjusting colors or they're darkening something. That way I know exactly what the purpose of each layer is when I'm going through. Now the second method of organization is grouping your layers. This one is incredibly useful if you're doing something per se on all of these steel beams and well you're going to be using a lot of textures. Same goes for these cliffs in the background. You can create a simple group and just name it whatever you want. Doing so allows you to also take anything related to that group and just throw it in. In this case, you can be a little bit more disorganized. As you can see, all of these metal textures are kind of just thrown in. I didn't really bother to name them. But the point is that by using a group, I am able to know that everything under this group is some kind of steel texture that I can use, which makes it a lot easier for when I have to navigate through. And if I don't need to look at these layers, I can just close up the group. Same thing goes for my cliffs. Everything in here is a picture of a cliff or something that is directly editing those cliffs. The other nice benefit to having grouped layers is that you can add layer masks directly on top of them, which makes it pretty easy for editing all of your grouped up images in one bunch. As you can see, that's what my cliffs look like without the layer mask. Groups also have nice benefits of being able to have different blending modes as well as being affected by uh, clipping masks and various other things. Now as we carry on we will move on to the third method of managing your layers and that is smart objects. Now typically when you import a brand new image into Photoshop that image will come in as a smart object meaning that Photoshop will basically maintain any of the pixel data within that object. It's very useful if you're going to be scaling stuff a lot. However, what not many people know is you can also turn more than one object into a smart object. So for instance, this layer I have here conveniently labeled people, letting me know that that's all the scale figures. I, if I double click it, it'll open up to another layer. When we select multiple layers, right click it and go over to convert to smart object, Photoshop will take that for us, condense everything down into effectively a brand new Photoshop file that is stored within your pre-existing file. 
This converts everything into a single layer and gives you the nice added bonus of being able to add on smart filters on top of it. Now, as you can see, I still managed to maintain the same general organizational rules from before where I have all of my actual people on one layer and their shadows on a separate layer. And of course, none of these are really named clearly, but it makes it much easier for me to differentiate the different elements on the screen. And now the last and final method, as I mentioned before, this one's a bit more of just a little tip, but if you right click the eye icon in your layers panel, you can actually change the color of it, which might be a fun little way to add some more color coding to your layers and keep them a little bit more organized. You can say that anything that is blue might be image layers or anything that is yellow might be a specific effect that is overlaid on top. This can be a good way to organize your layers at a glance. And that is all for layer management in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more questions, hit up Digital Demos at on Instagram at digital underscore demos, and feel free to ask any questions. We will be producing more of these mini demo videos periodically throughout the semester, so feel free to keep an eye out.